Hey, what is up guys? This is Nishi from MST.TV here back with another Market Watch episode. So I'm sorry, I don't think I've posted in about a week. I have been pretty busy with some non-Yu-Gi-Oh things, but we are back and we're talking about some changes that we've seen with the market as players look towards different aspects of the game in the future. Now with some cards, players are speculating based on how they think a card will perform in the meta, while with others, players are reacting to new support that was recently revealed over in the OCG. Either way, we're going to want to stay on top of all of these changes as they happen and try to see if there are any opportunities that we can take to either pick up or offload certain cards. Let's get started. Kicking things off, let's take a look at Mulcharmy Perulia. Now this is a card that's been on a huge roller coaster in the short time that it's been legal here in the TCG. It was an incredibly hyped up card once it was first revealed over in the OCG, where players were saying it's the new Maxi, and then players were sort of thinking that, you know, maybe it's only okay since only so many decks are going to be special summoning from the hand, and theoretically you only normal summon once a turn, so you can't really get too many draws off of this card. Then obviously info came out, this was one of the chase secreters in the set, but then players were saying, oh you know, this card's not that great, and then Mulcharmy Perulia fell down to like $35-$40. However, at the NAWCQ, players were saying that it was good, and we saw a lot of players have competitive success with this card in the side deck and sometimes even the main deck. But then we had the new Mulcharmy card revealed to be coming in Rage of the Abyss, which basically outclasses Perulia. All of that said, we are still seeing Perulia move with a ton of sold listings all over the past week or so, as players wanting to play competitive Yu Gi Oh! definitely need to own this card. Now, when I look at Perulia, I definitely see a good card for now but it's really difficult to justify wanting to pick it up when I see that we have an objectively better card coming out in just a couple of months. That said, the card is going to be really good and played a ton over the next couple of months, but I'm expecting it to fall in price a bit in October once the new Mulcharmy comes out. Now maybe I'm being a little bit skeptical here, but I think that if you want to pick up a playset of this card for yourself to use, that's a good call. This card shouldn't be reprinted until late in 2025. So you can still get good mileage out of it, and who knows, maybe we'll enter a format where this card is extremely relevant. However, I'm also going to say, this isn't something I would look to hold on to a ton of copies of. Maybe look to move them at your regionals or at a YCS over the next couple of weeks or months, but you definitely don't want to be holding on to too many copies of this card once Rage of the Abyss drops. Up next, we have another card out of the Infinite Forbidden, it's Dominus Purge. So this card is something that players are looking at as an alternative to Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. If your opponent controls a card, then you can activate this trap card from your hand even if you already control a card, and this card stops a card or effect that includes an effect to add a card from the deck to the hand, and then if you have a trap in your graveyard, you get to destroy that card as well. The big restriction is that if you activate this card from your hand, you can't use the effects of Dark Water or Fire Monsters for the rest of the duel. Now right out of the gate, this card hasn't been particularly sought after or expensive. It was actually one of the cheaper secret rares in the set, largely due to it just not seeing a lot of hype or competitive usage, especially over in the OCG. However, we've actually noticed this card starting to see more play recently. For some reason, I've been seeing a lot of deck lists coming out of Europe that seem to run this card in multiples in the main board. Of course, you can't use this card in Snake Eye, but in a deck like Melodious, this card might be a good tech. As a trap card, it plays around talents. And in a format where we have tons of valuable searchers like Tract, Engraver, Bonfire, and Poplar, having more ways to stop these searches can definitely be beneficial. This card has seen a bit of a bump up in price. The QCRs were at $45 or so, they're now up to $50 to $55. And then with the Secret Rares, they were down at $5 to $7. They're already up to $8, almost at $10 each right now. The difficult thing here is, I feel like there's a bunch of YouTubers and just players in general that are recommending this card as a cheap pickup, so I feel like as much as the card might be useful, a lot of the price increase might actually be attributed to people speculating and wanting to invest in it. But once people see that the card doesn't have any results, they might just try to sell it off at that inflated price and you're going to be stuck holding the bag. Be smart with this one guys, I definitely would not be actively looking to pay $8 to $10 cash for a copy of this card, but if you can get it at its pre-hype price of like $5 to $6, I think it's not a bad card to pick up here and there when you do see it like at your locals. Alright, this is an interesting one, we have Tokusano Shinkyojin, I probably botched that pronunciation so definitely sorry about that, but this card is basically a trade-in for level 10 monsters, but where you can send monsters from your hand and or field to the graveyard and their total levels have to equal 10. 
So obviously for the best value, you're going to want to just send a level 10 monster so that you're breaking even with this card. The only thing I can think of that uses level 10 monsters right now is Ubel, but you want to destroy those monsters rather than just send them away. However, in Crossover Breakers, we are getting a new theme called the Apodracosis, a really cool theme with these big level 10 monsters that really remind me of like Groudon, Kyogre, and Rayquaza. Anyways, because these monsters are level 10s, some players are saying that maybe Tokusano can be used in the deck as a form of draw power. Now, so far from replays and stuff that I've seen on YouTube, I've seen the Apodracosis cards used with Sword Soul, Yubel, and Voiceless Voice, but none of the lists have actually run Tokusano. However, players are still speculating and wanting to be prepared, so we've seen a couple of bumps up in Tokusano's price. The secret has gone from $3 to $5, nothing too crazy there, just a small bump, but the quarter century version has doubled in price, going from $20 before to now sitting between $40 and $45. The thing we do have to remember is that this card is from Duelist Nexus, so it should be in the 2024 tins. The thing is though, even if it's excluded for whatever reason, I feel like this is the sort of card that would just get reprinted in Crossover Breakers itself, so I wouldn't worry too much about not having this card if you want to play the Apodracosis cards, since you have two very good chances for the card to be reprinted. So yeah, pretty typical hype, but this isn't something I would be buying into. Definitely look to offload this card while players are hyping it up, since it likely won't even see very much play. Another card seeing hype because of the Apodracosis cards, we have Verudris, the final bringer of the end times. So of course, with Apodracosis being a strategy that uses level 10 monsters, Verudris has gotten a bit of attention as well. This card is a generic rank 10 Xyz monster that's basically an Omni Negate where you can detach a material from it to negate any card or effect. However, it's a bit cooler because it does have a couple of different effects where it's able to destroy cards on the field as well. So this is a card that a ton of players were really big on going into Legacy of Destruction. We thought that this card was going to see a ton of play in Ubel, though to be fair the deck has been sort of outshadowed with how dominant Snake Eye Fiendsmith has been. Verudris is actually something that was falling really steadily with it not being too meta relevant. It was hovering around the $12 to $14 mark for a couple of months there, but then it kept on dipping and I think it hit $8 at one point. However, with the Apodracosis cards, we've seen it rebound back up to between $13 and $15. From all the lists that I've seen running around, they do actually mostly play Verudris. In fact, several lists for Apodracosis that I've seen actually run two copies because it is just a generic rank 10 Omni Negate. I don't have any worries about this card getting reprinted. Legacy of Destruction is quite a new set, so Verudris shouldn't be reprinted until the 2025 tins. And of course, looking back at Yu-Gi-Oh's history, Omni Negates are usually pretty good and end up becoming quite expensive. So if we do see Yu Bell grow into a bigger deck in the format, or maybe Apodracosis becomes part of the best deck in the format, I could definitely see Verudris continuing to trend upwards, hitting maybe like $30, $40, especially if it ends up being played at more than one. Either way, I do think that picking up Secret Rare Verudris at around $10 to $12 is pretty safe and should be a good hold that you can consider moving closer to when Crossover Breakers comes out. The next card I want to mention here is number 103, Ragna Zero. Now this card actually used to be one of my favorite Xyz monsters in the game. It's actually a really, really good card. It's a generic rank 4 Xyz monster where you can detach a material as a quick effect to target a monster in attack mode on your opponent's field whose current attack is different from its original attack, and then you get to destroy that monster and draw a card. I don't remember exactly where it was. I think that we used this card back in Necroz format against Cleefort. Now, however, the card is being considered in the extra deck for the Rise Eagle archetype, another theme coming in Crossover Breakers that aims to spam rank 4 monsters onto the field. Now, stat boosting effects aren't particularly important in today's game, but depending on the format, there could definitely be small boosts here and there where this card could be useful, not just for destroying bodies, but for letting you draw cards as well. Even against Snake Eye, Divine Temple boosts your level 1 monster, so you could use this card to clear an Ash or an Oak before they have a chance to activate their second effects, or against some random deck, like maybe Tri Brigade, where they're playing something like Tanky, that 100 attack point boost off of Tanky could be something to keep an eye on now. Regna Zero hasn't been printed in quite a while, and has just one holo printing from back in Astral Pack 7. This card has actually been trending upwards in price over the last few months, going from $2 to $3 a few months ago to now sitting at $6 each. However, the thing to note is that in Crossover Breakers in the OCG, Ragna Zero is actually reprinted in the set itself, and I do think that there's a fairly decent chance that the same thing could happen here in the TCG as well. 
That said, even the rare copies of Regna Zero that exist already are still worth like two to three dollars, so this is a card I would actively look to try to offload over the next couple of months before that reprint does hit. Alright, moving on, let's take a look at Mausoleum of White. So as I'm sure that most of you have seen by now, we have a Blue Eyes structure deck coming out in the OCG, and theoretically we'll be getting it here in the TCG as well. The cards actually look really, really good, and Blue Eyes could be meta once again. The obvious sign that they're possibly broken is that they got a new Link 1 monster, which is typically something that's going to break a lot of different themes. For Blue Eyes, their Link 1 is able to search for Mausoleum of White, the field spell for the Blue Eyes cards. This card wasn't played in Blue Eyes decks before, but obviously it's definitely going to see play now since at the very least it's a free plus one that you could use as discard fodder. However, it's actually a pretty decent card. You get to normal summon a level one light tuner an extra time, so that lets you get out a sage, a maiden, a master, or one of the white stones, but it also lets you send a normal monster from your deck to the graveyard, which would probably just be a blue eyes white dragon. Now, more so than other decks, blue eyes players I feel want to bling out their decks as much as possible. A lot of them are probably just playing blue eyes because it's like their favorite card and the game is just for fun rather than them trying to be like ultra competitive about it so they just want to bling out their deck wherever possible. That said, Mausoleum of White has just one holo printing. It was an ultra rare in the Kaiba Legendary Collection. This card literally used to be like 25 cents. However, with the new support that was revealed, this card has shot up to being seven to eight dollars each with a ton of copies of the card actually moving at that price. This feels kind of crazy since it's just going to be a one of brick in the deck and the card itself will almost certainly get a reprint in the structure deck itself when it does come out, but people obviously really want to bling out their blue eyes stuff. This is a card for you guys to definitely try to dig up out of your old hollow bulk to see if you can move it to a dedicated blue eyes player. And finally, the last card we're talking about for today is Hedgeguard. So this is a super random one. It's a level three plant monster that works sort of like a hand trap. You discard it during damage calculation when a monster that you control attacks or is attacked. You cut the attack points of the monster that you control in half, but then it can't be destroyed by that particular battle. So obviously a pretty obscure card that I don't think should be all that relevant in 2024. If it saved your monster from being destroyed by battle for the whole turn, then maybe I could see it being useful, but just the one battle is kind of meh. So when I look at this card, I instantly think of 10 pie dragons, and maybe this card could be a side deck option against them to help you survive the battle phase. Maybe you could search this in something like Aromages or Synavalon because it's a plant. Honestly, it doesn't really seem all that great. However, I think more realistically, this might actually be a card for like a Time Wizard format, maybe in Tengu plants where you save a Titanial or a Giga plant, or even like a Dandelion so that you can just do more things on your following turn. Anyways, this card has just one holo printing, an ultra rare from Legendary Collection 5Ds, which is a set that wasn't really opened all that much. This card is actually pretty difficult to find. I don't think I ever see this just like sitting in someone's binder. But yeah, I don't think that this is going to be all that important of a card, even in the Time Wizard format where people are supposedly trying it out. So it's another card that I'd be looking to offload wherever possible. All right, guys, that is all we have for today's episode. Definitely some interesting stuff coming down the pipeline for us. We do still have to see that third archetype coming in Crossover Breakers. I'm really interested to see what they do. And of course, it's already August, right? So we should be at the middle to the end of the month, be getting that ban list that we've definitely been waiting for. That's going to hit Snake Eye and then shake up the format just a little bit. Anyways, guys, if you did enjoy today's Market Watch, please make sure you let me know by hitting that thumbs up button. Make sure you leave a comment in the comment section down below. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, guys, don't forget to hold on to your MST.TV.